Well hello indie people, how are you doing and welcome to the first day of World Autism Awareness Week. Starting from today up until the 2nd of April, I'll be making a video a day talking about different aspects of autism. And today's video is really about my childhood how I got the diagnosis of autism, the autistic traits that I showed, and also talking about school, how school adapted to my needs and just generally talk about school, how I felt. But if you want to learn more about autism, then consider subscribing down below and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss a video this week because I'll be posting every single day this week. Alright, so I was born in 1982 and I was diagnosed in 1996, 1997, somewhere around there. And in during these early years I exhibited autistic traits. But my parents didn't know anything about autism at the time. The only thing they knew about autism was Rain Man, you know, the 1980s film. So before I was actually diagnosed fully with autism, my parents thought I was deaf. This is because when they tried to talk to me, I wouldn't acknowledge them, I wouldn't make eye contact with them, and this is actually very common with autism, oddly. Because I didn't acknowledge them, they generally thought I was deaf, so I had my hearing tested, that was absolutely fine. Uh, so when the hearing test came back fine, um, the GPs actually thought that I had something called broken neck syndrome, which is basically a mix of a learning disability and cognitive impairment. So they took my blood for that, that was absolutely fine, but they knew that I had special educational needs and luckily I was placed into a special needs nursery slash primary school, It's what, it was one of those placements. And apparently because I was placed in this special school it actually was really helpful. This is because there were teachers there who had experience in autism, learning disabilities, etc which really helped with my own personal needs at the time. So I was at the school for a period of a year or two and then when I was four or five years old I got a confirmed diagnosis of PDD NOS which is pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified however now it comes under autistic spectrum disorder but with the traits that I showed in childhood, I had to talk to my mum about it because I literally could not remember anything from childhood. So this might come as a surprise to you guys. It came as a surprise to me, but apparently I was a screamer. I used to scream all of the time. I used to scream if I didn't get my own way. I used to scream if there was changes in routine. Like I loved routine, apparently. I still do love routine actually. I don't scream of course, but I love routine to this day. Apparently also I had broken sleep, like I'd sleep for a bit then wake up, sleep a bit then wake up. And also it took me a long time to actually fall asleep. It got to a point where my parents would actually sleep in shifts. So you know if I woke up in the middle of the night there'd be someone there. Which to me sounds not like me at all. but. But never mind. Uh, also, I didn't like loud noises. I couldn't stand any kind of loud noise that was sudden, clattering of plates, that sort of thing. I still don't like the clattering of plates, oddly, to this day. I actually remember from primary school that we were asked to go on a trip to go and see a African tribal band where they played traditional tribal music. And I remember getting so upset about it because of the fear of it being loud because I was quite sensitive to loud noise. I, I remember getting upset even before we got there and then when we got there I still wasn't that happy and I still went through to see the performance but I, but it was incredibly loud. Um, I wasn't happy. <laughs> Let's just put it that way, I wasn't happy. Also, when I was playing with toys and stuff, I used to line them up and make patterns with them, which is also quite common with autism. And also, I was a very picky eater. I, I remember to this day how much of a picky eater I was. The only things I really ate were pizza, spaghetti bolognese. That was about it. <laughs> also, I think this is an autistic trait as well to do with routine and stuff. But every single Sunday, without fail, my parents took me to McDonald's. Every single Sunday, without fail, 
and I I got a Happy Meal with chicken nuggets, fries, and a Coca-Cola. And then to finish off, I would get a ice cream from McDonald's. You know, can you guys can you guys remember the the, the little wafer cones? Ah, oh, those were the days. <laughs> and also, there's another trait which has a little bit of a story. And um, basically, outside my parents' house, there was a helicopter, and me and my mum were outside. And my mum was saying, oh, Andrew, look at the helicopter, look at the helicopter. But apparently, I didn't actually look at the actual helicopter. I would look at the end of my mum's finger, apparently. <laughs> Which I thought was quite funny. I just thought it would be quite fun to share with in this video. So anyway, that's the traits. And when I got my diagnosis and went into primary school, I went into a base for people with autism, learning disabilities and general behavioural issues etc. Um, so I would go there for practically everything, like all of my subjects, but slowly I would go into mainstream classes with my tutor group. And I remember primary school being awful, like I remember being picked on so much because of the way that I acted and stuff. You know, I don't think badly of it now because it was such a different time, you know, 15, 20 years ago and there wasn't much autism awareness at all. But unfortunately in primary school I was picked on quite a lot because I had a lot of language delay which I saw a speech and language therapist for. Uh, I had quite a lot of it actually. I had it right up until secondary school, like that's how bad my language which delay my general development was at that point. Basically I had issues mispronouncing words, I couldn't say certain words, I just struggled with general life skills like how to ask someone for something and in just general interaction. I could barely make eye contact with people and this is something I struggle with now. I really can't look at someone in the eye for a prolonged period of time. It just makes me incredibly uncomfortable like someone is staring into my soul which sounds stupid. It does sound stupid but it just makes me feel really uncomfortable so you know when I'm talking to someone I'll often look away from the actual person. If you look really hard you can just see my eyes going all over the place. But generally my communication in primary school was not great and this led on to secondary school. Basically what happened was in primary school I made some friends, like I made one or two friends that, um, that were really nice to me, you know, and really looked after me and looked out for me oddly enough. However, I moved to a different school in a different area but it was closer to me. Like in primary school I used to get a taxi from my house to the primary school and then back again. And I still got that service when I moved to secondary school but it was closer to me so I lost connections with everyone in primary school. And when I went to secondary school I was again placed in a special educational base or unit or whatever you want to call it. I remember hating <laughs> secondary school because just a lot of the people were awful to me personally like I got I got bullied in primary school and then it kind of continued in secondary school just because well I wasn't considered normal like I didn't act normal and people thought I was gay at one point in secondary school which is not that nice to be called when you're, you know, still trying to find yourself. In school I wasn't that good academically just because I had, a, I had a lot of needs and even when I was in mainstream classes I would still have a teaching assistant with me, and you know, just to explain the task and stuff like that. That was both in primary and secondary. When I got to secondary school that support started to come away because I was just coming more into my own. I just remember not liking secondary school at all. Like some of the teachers were actually really really nice but a lot of them I don't feel had the right training to be able to help me as an autistic person. But to be fair, it's been a long time since I was at school so I'm very much hoping that things have changed. And it was just tough. It was just tough being in school. 
However, I want to end this video by saying that if I didn't have that early intervention, then who knows where I'd be. I genuinely think that I wouldn't be in the position that I am today if I didn't have that early intervention and that support early on. And I did find school really difficult, but I wouldn't be the person that I am today without it. It's made me want to be a better person and try to help people because there was hardly anyone there for me. There was a few people like close friends and stuff in school. However when I finished school and stuff it really hit home for me that I wanted to help people and find a potential career that would allow me to help people. And I'm very much hoping with this YouTube channel that I've helped someone today, you know, talk about my experiences with school and stuff. And if you're a parent going through the process of diagnosis, I just hope this has helped you in some way and maybe given you some tips of how to help your child. Or you just generally want to know more about my childhood. Well, I hope this video has been informative enough for you. I hope it was what you were looking for. And with that, that is actually the end of this video. Thank you so much for joining me today for this. If you guys have any questions for me um, about this video and you want to know more specific things about my childhood, just let me know down below and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. But anyway guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you're brand new. Stay you, stay indie. I hope you have a really good day and I will see you all tomorrow with a new video. See you later guys.